Okay, so it says that I'm live, which I'm surprised it was going to let me go live. So I've got a bunch of glare from the light behind me. Uh, let's see if I go over here and mash on a bunch of buttons. I think I can get some light in front of me. There we go. It's better. Fun stuff. Anyway, uh, so this little uh, live session is just to uh, give a thanks to Mike Roche, um, who had provided to me some DJI goggles. I mentioned this on uh, the Thursday Night Live, but I just really wanted to take the time to, to, to give a proper level of thanks to him for this because the goggles were something I had been, you know, wanting for quite some time. I uh, just didn't have the means to get it. And Mike had a set that he was unable to use and was kind enough to provide to me. So um, he sent me the goggles themselves, which uh, I have been learning how to use um, and uh, learning all of the, I guess, the eccentricities of them. Uh, it takes a long time to charge them. Uh, but I have to admit that I haven't had to charge them for several of the flights that I've done. So they do last quite a, a long time. Uh, they're currently paired to work with the Mavic Pro uh, with Chris Rollins's drone, uh, but I have used them with the Heronbird as well, uh, using the USB connection, um, or excuse me, the yeah, the USB connection. Um, there is a way to use the HDMI connection, but my controller doesn't have that additional box on it uh, that gives you the HDMI input. Uh, so maybe later when I feel that I have the need, I may add that to the remote so that I can use the goggles and the, uh, iPad at the same time, because that's one nice thing about the, uh, wow, sorry, work computers being all noisy. Should have muted that. Anyway, um, so <coughs> the, uh, the Mavic. Uh, obviously, because it is connects to these wirelessly, I still have the feed on the iPad as well as in the goggles, which is really nice because if you're flying and you need to pop the goggles up, you can still look down and see your feed on the iPad. Though I noticed uh, yesterday I was getting some latency on the iPad. It seemed uh, like it wasn't keeping up, and I'm not sure if that was just because the signal traffic having to share it with the goggles is impacting it or not. Um, the other thing that I found that was interesting in these is that when I first got them, I adjusted the little diopter thing for your eyes, um, and it, it always seemed blurry, you know. Uh, I cleaned the lenses, it did all the things I could do, and it realized that the, the fault was me. Um, I have uh, some issues seeing things up close, so I wear these when I need to read things that are up close that are in, in small print. And of course, the detail in these goggles is in, just insane. But what's nice about them is that because of the additional space around the eye, eye ports, when you put this on, it will fit over the glasses without any difficulty. Nothing, nothing catches. I have plenty of space. And then I get just an amazing image. Um, so uh, that is another plus to these. Uh, if you have glasses, you can still wear them inside there. I might get uh, a set that aren't quite as wide as these, just so that it doesn't touch the, the little rubber, uh, I guess, uh, seal around the outside of it. But you know, because I had heard from a, a lot of different YouTube channels that keeping these things uh, scratch, you know, scratch free and, and clean and stuff like that is a challenge. Um, I went ahead and invested in a case specifically designed just for the, the goggles that has all of the cables in it. And the goggles fit nice and snug in there perfectly. And, and it works great. I love it. So um, that being said, the, the goggles themselves, I, I'm still experimenting with all of the features that it can do. I think the, the one thing I love is the head tracking with the gimbal because you turn that on and then wherever you move your head, whatever direction you look, 
that's where the camera goes. Um, it's great for flying and feeling like you're in the air. But if you're doing cinematography and stuff like that, your neck doesn't move smooth enough for you to get those nice gradual shots. You tend to be a little jerky. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily consider it for cinemata cinematography. Um, oh, who do we got? Uh, oh, we got some people joining. Cool. Awesome. Um, but so from the cinematography side, I, I wouldn't use the, the head tracking. Um, but when you, when you want to have fun, the head tracking is cool. Um, so if you haven't ever gotten a set of these, um, or if you ever considered, you know, thinking about getting a set of these, it is worth it. It really is. Uh, if you have a Mavic, it's massively worth it because it's all wireless and everything just connects. Um, if you have a Phantom, there's some, you know, connectors and cabling and stuff that you have to do. It might be a little bit more cumbersome, but the end result is, is that the imagery you get from these things through the goggles from the drone is just insane. The, the camera on the Phantom 4, I get just amazing clarity uh, out of this thing. So love it to death and uh, highly recommend it. Um, so my gracious thanks to Mike Roche for providing me those. Uh, I am absolutely in love with them. Hey, Chris, good to see you, sir. Uh, they are just the coolest goggles. And uh, so I hope to be able to make some more videos with, I guess, using them with the different drones so that you guys can see some of the, the effects. What I want to do is I want to show a difference between filming with the head tracking and then filming with just, you know, using the adjustments that you would use with your hands so you can see the difference in sort of the smoothness in the transitions. So, um, but yeah, they, they're, they're amazing goggles and definitely well worth it. Um, other than that, I, uh, Mike had, uh, him, Mike and I had talked about some of the problems that I'd have him with the uh, Rollins bird because the, the drone obviously being run over by a car uh, and rebuilt has its own little quirks. Uh, sometimes the front left motor doesn't put out the same revolutions that the other three do, and it tends to drift from time to time. Um, it the it it just has its own little. <laughs> it's hard to explain. It has its own personality. Um, and it's fun to fly. I love taking the Rollins bird out and, and putting it up in the air, but I'm terrified that because it's been pieced back together by me and I'm, you know, no genius that, you know, one day it's going to fall out of the sky or crash, which actually was my first problem with it because on the very first day I got the goggles, um, I put them on, paired them up with the drone, put it up in the air, flew about a hundred yards uh, you know, down the street and was going to go over to the pond near the house just to, to kind of do an orbit and bring it back. And as I started heading toward the pond, I lost the feed. The goggles went blank. The iPad went blank. Everything, I, you know, no signal, no nothing. And I was terrified. I was thinking, oh my God, the drone fell out of the sky. Um, and so I turned to walk toward the house because I was going to go get my keys and get the car and drive down there and see if I could find the carcass. And as I am walking toward the house, just instinct, I look back over my shoulder one last time and I could see the drone just on the other side of the tree, uh, still hovering in the air. So I tested the remote a little bit. I saw the drone moving. I realized that even though I didn't have any signal, the drone would respond. So I visually flew it back and landed it, reset everything, flew it again, just right there around the house. Everything seemed to be fine, but uh, what I found, come to find out was, is that because, because Mike had bought these things a year ago and never used them, they'd never been updated. The firmware was the original firmware from a year ago, and obviously it was not going to communicate well with the firmware that was in the Mavic, which was you know up to date. So I took the goggles inside. I plugged them up to the DJ assistant too. And apparently the one day that I wanted to update the firmware was the one day that DJI services were experiencing problems. So 
after frustrating several hours, the goggles finally updated. <coughs> and uh, once they were fully updated, I haven't had another lick of problem with them. But because the fear of losing the Rollins bird uh, is always sort of prevalent there, uh, Mike let me know that he had two Mavic Pros that he owned as well as his Mavic 2. Uh, one Mavic Pro had never been opened. It was still had all the stickers on it. He had another Mavic Pro that had uh, that he had flown a couple of times that had fallen off a table once. And uh, and he's offered to send me the Mavic Pro that fell off the table. Um, and basically the 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 consensus is is that I'll have a Mavic Pro that wasn't run over by a car um, that I can have a little bit more confidence in uh, for general usage. The Rollins bird, I'm still going to fly, but I want to to do that sort of limitedly so that I don't lose that drone. It's sort of one of a kind. Um, so looking forward to receiving that. No, 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 no. I don't have it. Where'd it go? I have no idea where he went. You have to go look for it. I can't. Okay, well then don't look for it. You got to love four-year-olds. They just come in whenever they feel like it. So. Uh, and now I have to go find a Zomboss, whatever the heck that is. Uh, no idea what a Zomboss is. Um, but anyway, uh, so thank you guys for listening in. Uh, thank you, Mike Roach, for one amazing gift. Um, I just don't have words to to express the thanks that I, that, that I feel. Um, and I will definitely put the uh, these things to use on a regular basis. So uh, the goggles themselves, I, I don't, I don't go outside without them. Now I, I've, I've got them with me all the time. I, I love flying with them. Um, other than that, I uh, hope to have more videos uh, soon. Uh, kids are off to uncles for the summer. I have a lot of free time to be able to get out and drive around and film some stuff. So hopefully I'll have an opportunity to, to get out and take some of these drones and, and put them to some good use. Uh, head out to Conroe, film the you know stuff out at the lake and hunt around the area around here, see if I can find anything that's even photogenic, which unfortunately in my area is mainly cow pastures. I don't think people have a lot of desire to watch cow pastures, but I could probably find something exciting in it, like maybe a wrecked car or an outhouse or something. I'll look. We'll find us. We'll find something. Um, other than that, thank you very much for chiming in. And uh, I will see you guys again on Thursday Night Live. Uh, can't wait to see what Ken does to me this time. So have a good afternoon. Have a great week. Take care at all.